Our brain is of a single unified mass. The main differences with the human brain are that it works much faster, forms connections faster, does not think only in terms of duality, which also implies full use of both hands, fully ambidextrous. It has up to 500 cc more volume of brain mass. Although the head is apparently the same size, more space is freed inside, structuring itself differently, also because it has no gap between the lobes. But the Tigetan skull is a little larger, it is noticeable in the front part, with a lot of forehead and very straight, as in this well-known actress, a lot of frontal lobe. It involves mathematical thinking integrated into artistic thinking, understanding not only both, but also mixing them as a single knowledge, since art is in engineering and there is art in mathematics, such as fractals of secret geometry, for example. That is to say, one does not think in terms of technology attacking the artistic or demurring it, but rather that everything is mixed technology and art. So, it is not like on Earth, where depending on the person can have more facility in a field, although there are preferences, but these are not because someone can't with the mathematical issue, for example. Everything is relatively easier than for races with two hemispheres. We also have faster learning of all topics equally, with faster data processing as well, but with a higher consumption of glucose too, that is, it uses more energy. The cerebellum is larger, creating a greater connection with the etheric, just as the nervous voltage is also greater, it is more electrical, generating more body static. As for other races, the Urma, for example, also have a single unified mass brain, cat brain, but already highly evolved. As you will see in this image, in the brain, above with the Alfratians or the Umets, they can have a large cerebellum, but still have two lobes. The corpus callosum is larger in them than in humans, connecting both hemispheres more efficiently, but not as fully efficiently as a unified brain of other races. Externally, they look almost the same or the same, but inside they work differently. In the case of the Alfratians and why they have the brain of two masses, it is because the Alfratians are basically stellar humans. As you know, they came from Earth for the most part. They will evolve and express themselves physically as they best fit according to their consciousness and their life over the generations. As we have always said, genetics only reflect how and who its owners are. So even though they are in fifth density and their DNA has returned to the original state, due to their frequency they are still consistent with having the brain that way. That is a reflection of their own ideas, their priorities. In this case, their need to see things separately, that is very human. You separate everything, the need for dissection to understand. You decompose everything to see its parts according to how it works. So, the idea of living in 3D, 4D, 5D, 7D, whatever, when there are no densities, is just an idea that you have. Everything is a single density and depends on each one from where to where they can see. That is a very big difference between Taigeta's mentality and the human one. The human tends to separate to understand something by the sum of its parts. The Taigetan tends to unify and understand what it is as a whole and how it connects with other things, to understand how it connects to those other things. The human tends to do something smaller, dissect it into smaller parts in order to try to understand it better, 
the Tigetan tends to see something and try to see the connection with the whole. We tend to add, to integrate. It's because of how your brain is made, as we say here. Breaking things down into simple parts will not give you a reliable explanation of why things are. It only limits. Because no matter how much you dissect a frog, you will never know what a frog is, or what it feels like to be a frog, or what it means to be a frog. For the human, how the internal organs work is more important than being. Here, being comes first, what it means to be a frog, and life is sacred. This is an example of why lately, as races, we do not understand each other. On the other hand, for example, the Homo capensis in M45 of the star Asterope, compared to the Tigetan brain, they do have a lot of skull, but that translates into low brain density. I mean, a lot of wow, but little intellect, just comparatively. Another point is that they have a unified brain, but a lot of corpus callosum, little density, as I said, and this means that the bone plates of the skull differ from the human. The main bony craniocephalic cleft is missing. That's a unified brain landmark, in contrast to the three-point junction found at the top of the human skull. The human being has a more compact and dense brain. In many or all circumstances, it works better and faster than a more porous one. This is in defense of the Liran races. That is, not to be impressed and less intimidated by that skull. It is not that they are less, of course not. Only with so much head, they do not have more intellect as an IQ compared to a Liran skull like the one we have. They also contain more craniocephalic fluid and brain support fibers, which are the structures that hold the brain in place, making it shock resistant, just like wearing a built-in motorcycle helmet. So, what I mean is that the Homo capensis, in a competition of intellect, have no advantage against someone with a round skull like Liran. They are not the invincible great geniuses as they appear to be. It is only a variant, more inclined towards protection. And even so, I see it as problematic to have that in the head, or to have the head like that. This is also a trauma for them. You can tell that they hide it, not only on Earth, as you described it, for reasons that humans do not realize. But they also hide it where they don't have to. That is, their clothing at home includes that kind of accessories on the head to lessen the aesthetic impact of their skull. In the case of Homo capensis or Elohi, they are not so directly linked to us. That is, they are distant relatives of Lyra. As you may have noticed, in space, outside the Earth, there are beings that go from exactly like humans to others similar in the outside, but not inside, and all kinds of variants on a scale or decline from equal to very different and every point in between. I speak of thousands and thousands of races. So, they fall on the scale of less similarity to humans. Returning to the Tigetan brain, compared to the human brain, our pineal gland is 400% larger and is fused into the corpus callosum. But, as we have said, the whole body, not just the brain, is the antenna. The pineal is more developed and larger in a unified brain. It is an important piece, like all of them, but it is not the only entrance of the soul, to call it somehow. Each cell will have its own connection or version of connection with the etheric side or spiritual side. That is to say that the pineal gland, 
Contrary to what is said, it's not the only point in the body that is responsible for extrasensory perception and the connection with the unified field, but rather the whole body as a unity gives or receives said connection. The pineal gland is only the most obviously active element within a system, within a whole. Another aspect is that they say that the human brain has about 80,000 million neurons. I do not have the comparative data regarding ours. I do not know if we even count them. We don't have such a mechanical concept here. But it must be seen that it is not only how many neurons, but the complexity of the networks and how they are interconnected, that is, the brain or neural density, not just the quantity. That is why I tell you that omocapensis is not necessarily smarter, because it is not. It is just another model. I dare say that the Tigetan brain must have on average the same number of neurons as the human brain. I say that as I have no more data. Another characteristic is that the human brain has laterality. That is to say that each hemisphere of the brain interacts mainly with one half of the body. The connections are crossed. The left side of the brain interacts with the right side of the body, and vice versa. The motor connections go from the brain to the spinal cord, and the sensory connections from the spinal cord to the brain, both crossing the midline at the level of the brain stem. So, in that case, the unified brain has no laterality. It works as a whole, being that laterality is something of a concept, because physiologically it is like having redundant systems, since any nervous function controls both sides. But it does have it in the sense of knowing or being aware of the sides, but not as a left and right brain function, not separately. Taking myself as an example, I can write by hand with the same skill with my left hand and with my right hand. On Earth, almost all languages are written from left to right, which makes it difficult to write with the left, except for Arabic and Japanese, among others. In Taigeta, so that this is not an impediment, it is written from top to bottom and then column to the right. But this happens not only in writing. I see no difference between using my left hand and my right, having the ability to even do something with one hand and something totally different at the same time with the other, with total skill. As a rough example, I can brush my teeth with all skill and care while using the PC mouse to see things in the meantime, among many other things such as shooting, painting, cutting, etc. In the case of humans and the brain of two masses, what can determine being right-handed or left-handed? The why for me is simple. It just happens, because there is no reason why it shouldn't happen, since essentially the sight is just a concept. But why, spiritually speaking, it would be summarized in the same as always, better reflecting how someone was in a previous life, or how it is in other densities, by frequency parity. However, a physiological reason, I ignore the direct motive, I guess because that doesn't happen here. But not everything is better with having a unified brain. For example, one tends to be highly dyslexic, although that is also because of our mother tongue, which is not linear. So again, taking me as an example, I have a lot of problems with the order of the letters, or I put spaces where they don't go, or I just don't see a spelling error, because all the letters are there, but not in the correct order. I only see the word and understand it, but I don't see that it is misspelled. So our spelling with human language is not that good, despite countless hours of writing. 
And as we get tired of writing, as the hours go by, we become more and more dyslexic, to the point that we can no longer write well. As time goes by, I write more mistakes and spend more time correcting them before sending the sentence. That is, we tend to have dyslexia with all Earth languages, but not with ours. As I have told you before, it does not observe the same inflexibility of syntax and grammatical construction as a human language. Another case is that we tend to try to solve a mathematical problem using musical tones imagined in the mind, or vice versa. For example, the destination frequency of a spacecraft is represented by a mathematical number, but it can and is stored many times as a series of musical tones, that is, the direction of the Earth or of any other place is represented by a tune, not called numbers. Our nervous system is much denser than the human, as it has to be for sharing information with both sides of the body. By denser, I mean that the nerves and the nerve endings can carry a higher signal load. That is, they support a greater range of stimulus between and in the discharges, between the dendrites of the neurons that compose them, with a recovery and regeneration time of neurotransmitters between each discharge, and this due to a greater amount of mitochondria in all cells, which provides a greater amount of energy. This results in a faster metabolism. As a negative point, having this cellular and especially nervous metabolic acceleration causes a collapse or the cells to be exhausted faster, which increases the vulnerability to diseases caused by adrenal overstimulation, that is, stress. An example of this is that we are prone to suffer of a lot from frequency dissonance. So, as a positive aspect, we would see it reflected as more physical resistance, but at the cost of vulnerability in terms of cellular energy overload, as I have described above. That is, it increases resistance to neurotransmitters and their regressors or neutralizers, what produces that a cell or a neuron has to work more to stimulate the following one, so that a stimulus and a nervous transmission of any type can take place. This is caused by a stimulus overload. In short, we resent stress more. It can also be explained that genetically we are not used as a race to as much constant stress as humans there. We have no ways to counter it. Just recently, and using me as a guinea pig, we are seeing that getting a lot of exercise every day and I mean a lot of exercise, two hours or more sometimes, helps to get rid of the harmful effects of stress and frequency dissonance. Compared to humans, on average we have almost twice the physical strength and endurance, at the cost of half the endurance in terms of stress. <laughs>